Hi there, I'm Michael Odie, Senior Technical Director for Windows IT Pro. And in this short video, we're going to look at managing uh, VMware's ESX server from uh, Virtual Machine Manager, and also from the other way, managing Microsoft's Hyper-V from VMware's vCenter. We're going to look at a couple different products to do this. Uh, from the VMware side, we're going to look at using um, VMware's um, multi-hypervisor manager and then from the Microsoft side we're going to look at managing ESXi from VMM 2012. Okay, I finished the installation for the vCenter uh, multi-hypervisor manager. Now let's go ahead and connect it to um, a Hyper-V virtual machine. You can see in, in this screen uh, that vCenter, my OR port VCO1, is connected to um, a Hyper-V system. To use the new multi-hypervisor manager, we would go over here to inventory, and then we would collect, connect, or connect to the vCenter multi-hypervisor manager that we see here. And at this point, we don't have a Hyper-V host connected, so let's go ahead and click the Add Third Party Host uh, button to do that. We can type the name or IP address of the host, so let's enter its IP address. And then let's give it the authorization that's needed to connect in. In this case, we'll go ahead and connect in as the administrator. And that's all we need to do to send it over. And remember, um, the WinRM uh, has been installed and configured remote management for that host. So I've added that and run WinRM quick config over there on the Hyper-V setting. And that is required for uh, the vCenter multi-hypervisor manager to go in and connect to it. And so you can see the connection process is taking just a minute here. There's a warning that says this connection is not encrypted. That's okay. For what I'm doing and there you can see we have made a connection to the host and it has three virtual machines out there let's go ahead and review it that is the host we want to connect to it is a Windows Server 2008 R2 machine and so we've gone ahead and done the connection and you can see in our status bar we have the add third-party host task going on here um, it is running on our vSphere Center and it is in progress and there you can see it has gone ahead and added the host and if we expand it we can see the statuses of the virtual machines out there I have one VM that's running a couple of others that are uh, ones in the save state the other is uh, turned off uh, we can see some of the settings that we have we can look at the summary of the VM the memory that it has allocated its host name, the address that it's using, a um, few other uh, settings that we can do. Let's see if we right click on it. You can see the our management settings. We can power the machine on, off, suspend, reset it, or shut down the guest. Like for, or we can edit settings. And our edit settings looks very much like your normal vSphere settings. So we can alter the memory, CPUs, floppy drive, hard disk. Um, we can change all of these sorts of things if we like. We can also create new virtual machines if we want to. Um, let's go ahead and, like, this machine is suspended, so let's go ahead and power it on. So you can see at this point, this virtual machine would be coming up, and we've got the power on virtual machine task coming up. And so that is kind of a summary of the management that we can do out here. If we wanted to add a new virtual machine, we could click this, right click it, our host name, hit the new virtual machine button, and it would walk us through a, a wizard that's very much like creating a new uh, VMware vSphere virtual machine. So that's kind of a quick summary of what the vCenter multi hypervisor manager looks like. Okay, now let's see how we can manage uh, VMware ESX servers with a uh, virtual machine manager 2012 so first let's go ahead and open up uh, the virtual machine manager console uh, you can see we're in the VMs and services tabs you can see we've got a cluster out here with a couple different hosts under it uh, and the couple virtual machines are running a few are not okay now 
Before we get started, it's a good idea to add a run as account because we're going to need this run as account to connect to the vCenter server that, um, that uh, Virtual Machine Manager talks to. So first let's click on the settings uh, tab that we see down here. Now let's click create run as account. Uh, let's give this a uh, name, we'll call it uh, vCenter Administrator. And this, um, this account does need to have administrative privileges on the vCenter server. This can be a, um, hold on a second, username, let's get that in right, we missed that, we'll call it administrator, and then we'll put in the password for that account. Then we're going to uncheck the validate domain credentials. This could be a domain account. I'm not using one in this example, but it, it can be one as long as that domain account has administrative privileges on the vCenter server. So, and we spelled that wrong. Let's recheck this. This looks right. vCenter administrator is our run as account. We're using that username. Okay, that looks pretty good. So we have created our run as account. Next, we need to tell Virtual Machine Manager about our vCenter server that we're going to be connecting to. So we're going to click on the Fabric uh, link down here, and then we've got this vCenter Servers tab in here. So let's right-click it and say Add VMware Vir vCenter Server. So it's going to give us the computer name for that, or ask us for it, and in this case it's OR port vc01 and we are going to connect to it using the standard port it's going to ask us for the administrative account so this is going to be the run as account we just created so let's see what it is and let's select our vCenter administrator account and say OK and we'll go ahead and keep the default of connect to the VMware ESX hosts in secure mode and let's click OK at this point it's going to go out and uh, attempt to connect to the VMware vCenter server. And we can see the job steps. And it's going ahead and adding our vCenter server. It takes it just a minute here. So it's going to go ahead and connect to our vCenter server and it has completed. So we can see that uh, with our job steps we have successfully done that. So let's close that up and you can see that now under our vCenter servers we have our vCenter servers OR port VC01 and it is responding out there. Now that we've got the vCenter server added into our fabric, let's go ahead and add uh, a new host group for the vCenter ESX uh, I hosts that are out there. And to do that we're going to say, well let's add a new host group first and we'll keep it separate. You don't have to do this. You can put it into your existing host groups but in this case uh, it might be a little bit simpler and clearer to show it in its own host group. So we'll say VMware vSphere And so we've created a new host group. Now let's go ahead and add, uh, we right clicked on that uh, host group and we're going to say add VMware ESX host and clusters. Again, we're going to specify or tell it that run as account that we have and it's going to be the vCenter administrator account. Then we're going to click next and it's going to go out to the vCenter server and it's going to say, hey, what hosts are you managing out there? And it sees a VMware ESXi host, and this is a, a 5.1 host. We check it to be sure to go ahead and add it into um, our virtual machine manager setting. And then let's go ahead and click Next. At this point, it's going to ask us about um, what host group we're going to put it in, and we're going to put it in the VMware vSphere host group. We're not going to change any of the, the default path settings and clicking next gives us our uh, summary setting and then finish we'll go ahead and start the job to go ahead and add our ESX host and so you can see the host is being added out there you can see the job status 
It's at 99% now. And it has finished. So our ESX host has been added. So let's close our host pane. Now, there it is. So we can see there's our VMware vSphere host group. And there is our new um, uh, ESXi host. Now, it takes it just a minute here to populate this. So right now, it's going ahead and going out. And it's going to connect to the vSphere system and to the vSphere vCenter system and then it's going to retrieve the different hosts and their states and you can see that uh, it's beginning to populate things now so it takes it just a minute to do this uh, first step while it initializes all the different hosts that are out there okay it's still collecting the different hosts you can see the different statuses that are out there there's a couple running a couple stopped We've just about got the host collected now. You can see that we can manage these hosts a lot like we could a standard um, a VMware uh, a virtual machine, uh, except that we're using the Virtual Machine Manager console to do it. Uh, if we right click on one of the hosts, like OR port VC01, that happens to be our vCenter server. If we right click on that, we'll get a context menu. Uh, we could go ahead and look at the the different mach virtual machine properties if we want to and we can see the the general status of the virtual machine whether it's running we can look at its hardware configuration you can see that it's a one processor machine it's using two gigabytes of memory you can see if it's using a floppy drive you can look down and see the IDE devices that are connected uh, you can look and see if the DVD drive is attached to the physical drive or an ISO file you can look at its checkpoints. Basically, many of the things you could do just as if it were a Hyper-V virtual machine, uh, you can change here. Um, we can also, of course, uh, power virtual machines on and off. I see we've got a couple running here. We've got OR port VM2 is running. Let's go ahead and have a look at v OR port VM1. Let's go ahead and power it on. We could pa You can see we can power it on, shut it down, power off. Basically, our entire power management types of functions, we can do them all here. Migrate storage would initiate um, a vMotion storage migration, and a Migrate Virtual Machine would initiate a vMotion. Let's go ahead and power this one on. You can see that we have started the virtual machine, and even though it's running over there on an ESX server, uh, we were able to manage it and uh, start it from, um, from VMM 2012, and uh, everything is working here pretty much like you'd expect it to be. And so you can see VMM 2012 with uh, it connects to ESX server pretty seamlessly and it provides basic management functions plus a few more.